Welcome to Voice of the Nation. You are with me, Chan Chai Wong. And our guest for today is a person who's been promoting Muay Thai as an international sport and as a very popular mixed martial art competition. He is the founder and president of One Championship. Please welcome Kun Cha Tui Sit Yot Thong. Welcome to our program, Kap. Thank you so much for having me. Sorry, Kap. So, what do you have, Kun Chatri? First of all, let me ask you: How is the? Uh, you are in Singapore right now because yes. championship is based in Singapore. May I ask how the COVID 1 9 pandemic affect your championship for the past two years? Uh, it's been very, very difficult. Of course, you know normally we throw events all over Asia: Shanghai, Tokyo, Bangkok. Um, but this last two years, because of COVID, all the borders have been shut um, in each country. Uh, the governments have done so, uh, but we've been very lucky that after three months, the Singapore government entrusted one to come back live uh, in the middle of the pandemic uh, at the Singapore Indoor Stadium, throwing uh, events uh, without fans with a live broadcast to 154 countries, and so you know we have been able to do very well, not just survive but thrive in the last two years. Uh, we actually hit. Break, record-breaking highest viewership numbers on TV, social media, digital media uh, for us uh, each of the past two years because of the partnership with the Singapore government. Um, so it's been very difficult. Um, even getting athletes into the country, we had special permission from the Singapore government, special green lane travel, uh, but we we kept the COVID bubbles. So from the airport, the cars, the the hotel, and the stadium were all uh, COVID bubbles, and. Uh, So it was very difficult, but we're lucky that we solved it. We we found the solution, and and here we are, uh, as strong as ever, the strongest in history. That's good to hear. And how how are things going to to go this year? Can you start it to welcome audience audience in the arena? Yes, um, Saturday, March 26th, So exactly eight days from now, we will have uh, thousands of fans in the stadium, almost back to pre-COVID era. It's still going to be limited audience. But it will be several thousand fans in the stadium, uh, so it will be our largest event in two years since COVID. Uh, so we're very excited about it. But it's our 10th year anniversary show. The show is called One X, and uh, One X for the Roman numeral 10. And uh, it's going to be the biggest show in the history of One. Um, we have uh, over 20 plus world championship bouts. We have five world title fights. We have one uh, world Grand Prix fight. We have one super fight, and the very fun thing is that we have you know world championship athletes in mixed martial arts, Muay Thai, kickboxing, and submission grappling, uh, showcasing. Uh, it's the biggest martial arts event in the history of, of the world, uh, and I think this is the kind of event in the next five, 10, 15, 20 years, all the fans around the world remember this. Uh, as a magical memory, as a moment in time uh, that they could see the highest level martial artists on the planet all in one card all day long, from 1 p.m. Singapore time to 11 p.m. Singapore time straight. So uh, we've never done this, uh, and no organization has ever done this. So it's very exciting. And this year mark the 10th anniversary of one championship. Uh, what do you think make this championship so successful? I think you know it's uh, because you know Asia is from sorry martial arts is from Asia, so it's a real authentic uh, story in terms of one being the home of martial arts and showcasing the best martial arts from around the world as a global property. But I also think that to be honest, we got lucky. We got lucky because you know on the mobile device. You can't see the ping pong ball. You can't see the soccer ball. You cannot see the basketball. You cannot see the tennis ball, but you can see martial arts and gaming. Those are our two properties, right? One 
uh, one we have two sports properties. One is martial arts and one is gaming. And the mobile device is perfect. So all millennial and Gen Z, when they wake up in the morning, they go Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok, or they see one championship content. And that's why we got very lucky. As smart mobile devices rose, as the most popular sports in the world for mobile devices, martial arts and gaming, we were lucky to be in the right place at the right time. So I think it's a, a lot of factors. But of course, um, my team and I uh, work very, very hard. And I'm very blessed to have, I think, uh, the greatest team in the world working at one. Okay. And yourself, you also used to be a Muay Thai fighter, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, about your Muay Thai career path? And how did yeah. you became the founder of one championship? Sure. So I started uh, Muay Thai uh, when I was 13 years old. So over 37, 37 plus years ago. And I started at Sityotong, uh, Kai Sityotong, which is Sityotong Gym under yes. Kruyotong Senanan. And, uh, you know, I was 13 years old and I always wanted to do Muay Thai. I fell in love with Muay Thai when I was around nine years old. Uh, my mother is Japanese. My father is Thai. I was living in Thailand at the time. I watched on TV, Lumpini Stadium, all the amazing fights. But my parents wouldn't let me uh, train until I was 13 years old. And when I was 13, I went there and I fell in love uh, with Muay Thai. And, you know, the very first day was extremely hard training, uh, very, very difficult training. And, um, and at that time in Thailand, you know, Muay Thai was for poor people. And yeah. It was very difficult. And I was the only Dek Loy, uh, the only, um, you know, rich kid, uh, rich kid uh, training Muay Thai. You know, many years later, my family did go bankrupt, right? My father went bankrupt and, and abandoned the family and we became poor. But when I was 13, I was still from a, a good family. So it was very unusual uh, that I, and, you know, today Muay Thai, for example, if you go to Bangkok or you go to Pattaya, People from all walks of life train Muay Thai. Rich people, foreigners, tourists, uh, you know, poor people. Everyone trains Muay Thai. When I was growing up, only the very poorest people trained Muay Thai. And only um, it was only for real fighters. It was not for a hobby. Yeah, that is very interesting. Muay Thai. And, and, you know, I have been very fortunate that I was able to represent uh, Si Yotong, uh, you know, uh, in, in competition, uh, Kru Yotong gave me the name uh, Yot Chatri Siyotong uh, as my uh, fight name. And uh, I have a very long history with Siyotong Jim. And that's why even to this day, as you know, the Nak Moy, the, the, the Muay Thai fighters, um, when you compete for your gym, you, you, you use the last name, you use the gym's name as your last name, right? Um, so for example, Stam Fairtex, who's competing next Saturday, you know, she's using Stam Fairtex as her name, just as I use uh, Yot Chatri Siyotong. Uh, that Kruyotong Senaran gave me. Um, and, you know, I never became a world champion or I never became a superstar. You know, I have about 30 fights uh, overall. And uh, versus, let's say, a Lumpini Stadium champ champion typically has 300 fights. Um, but, you know, I love Muay Thai. I train, I compete, I teach. Uh, I've taught in Thailand, in, 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 in America when I was studying. Uh, there, uh, Muay Thai has always been a very big part. It's my, been my greatest passion in life. So, um, of course, today, uh, it makes me so proud that I can show Thailand on the global stage of business and sports, you know, my, my, my beloved country, my home country of Thailand, to show how great Thai business people can be, but also how great Thai athletes can be on the world's largest stage of martial arts. So, you know, I see my life has come full circle as a young student learning Muay Thai from a wealthy family to becoming poor, to going to America as a poor student, to teaching Muay Thai in America and competing, coming back to now, you know, having my own uh, martial arts gyms and, uh, you know, evolve and then starting one championship. Uh, I feel my life has come full circle, my journey. Uh, as a martial artist, as a lifelong martial artist. And how did you start at the One Championship 10 years ago? Yeah. So I started One Championship in 2011. I had a very simple dream. You know, I wanted to share my greatest passion, which is martial arts, uh, with the whole world. At the same time, I saw in Asia, there's no global sports media property. All the Asian properties were very local. So the Thai League 
or India Premier League for cricket. There's nothing Pan-Asian and nothing global. And when I started, the first three years was disaster. I got thousands of rejection and failures. Everyone said, we don't need an Asian property. We already have EPL or Champions League or NBA on TV. We have uh, Thai Premier League. We don't need Asia. And after three years, the business was a disaster, losing millions of dollars and, and going nowhere. For the first three years. Quit. Yeah, first three years, disaster. I almost quit because the market was killing me. Just everyone said, you know, broadcasters, brands and governments and fans and athletes. No one was giving me a chance. But, you know, I love martial arts. It's my greatest passion. And I'm grateful today now. Nielsen, you know, the, the authority, the media authority on, on TV ratings and viewership. They say that one, in, one is now the top 10 in the world largest for uh, viewership and engagement, you know, bigger than F1, same size as NBA uh, or EPL or Champions League now all over the world. And I never imagined 10 years later we would be, you know, top 10 in the world in size. But even Facebook actually last year, um, at the end of the last year, the, the head of global sports, Peter Hutton, messaged me to let me know that, you know, one is now top number one out of 5,000 sports properties on Facebook for organic video views. We have the most popular uh, sports property is one bigger than NBA, bigger than EPL, bigger than F1, bigger than Champions League on Facebook. And so it's just um, it's crazy. This this ride, you know, the first three years if I quit, I, we wouldn't be here. So I think people love one because of our formula of values, heroes and stories. Yes. We celebrate values of like integrity or humility, courage, hard work, honesty, compassion. We have heroes who are the best martial arts on the planet, who inspire entire countries, inspire the world. And we share their stories of overcoming adversity and poverty and tragedy to become world champions. And I think that is what's so beautiful. Like Even if you look at our Muay Thai world champions, if you look at Nong Oh, Kayang Hadao, he's defending his title next Saturday. You know, he comes from very, very poor family. His family was rice farmers uh, earning, you know, uh, you know, a few hundred baht a month, uh, you know, in, in uh, Isan. And he never thought he's going to be able to compete on a global stage where the whole world is watching. And this makes me so happy. You know, um, Muay Thai used to be, when I was growing up, only in Thailand. You know, it was on Channel 7 or Channel 3, uh, only Lumpini Stadium. Today, Muay Thai is broadcast 150 countries around the world with one championship. And our Thai athletes can show them why they're the best in the world. Uh, as a Thai citizen, I feel very grateful and happy for the opportunity that I can showcase and bring honor and glory to Thailand, both in the business world, but also in the sports world. Okay. If we look back 20 years ago, nobody probably imagined that uh, Muay Thai would be a world-class sport and it would be uh, broadcasting around the world. And yes. there's no doubt that you play a very important role for promoting Muay Thai. So in your view, what made Muay Thai so appealing to foreigners? Well, you know, I think um, Muay Thai has proven over the years to be one of the most effective striking martial arts for real life self-defense or the ring for competition. Muay Thai is recognized around the world now to be uh, one of the best, if not the best martial arts uh, on the planet. And this is something that Thai people didn't know. You know, they, in Thailand, we have a saying, uh, you know, Morodok, Thai, Morodok, Ro, you know, uh, Muay Thai. Yes. But now it's truly becoming a Morodok, Ro, because of one. And it's because it's a beautiful art. So much history, so much tradition, so much custom, so much culture from the white crew, you know, the rum way, all of that. Um, and I also want to honor my my master, Kruyotong Senanan, you know, he changed my life. And I want to honor all my Sityotong brothers and sisters around the world. I want to honor my master, Kruyotong Senanan. Um, but of course, um, you're right. 20 years ago, I never imagined. You know, I started Muay Thai 37 plus years ago as a little kid in Patea. 
I never thought that I'd be here today, you know, with the biggest promotion in the world for Muay Thai and mixed martial arts. You know, one is now the world's largest martial arts organization in the whole world. So it's just, I'm, sometimes I pinch myself, I feel I'm dreaming. But it's real life, you become a real inspiration. Yes. And um, I think that Muay Thai became recognized by Westerner quite late, if compared to Chinese Kung Fu or Japanese Karate. Yeah. And I think that most Westerner, when they first heard about Muay Thai, is when they saw Chong Khot Van Damme movie, Kickboxer. In yes, yes, I agree. Have you seen that movie? Yes, I've seen that movie. <laughs> yeah, and uh, in your view, when did you think that Muay Thai really started to become popular? When when it started to gain momentum? Yeah. So so I think the the last uh, the last three years is when the boom of Muay Thai around the world happened because of one championship. Because we're we're broadcast live to 154 countries almost every week. We showcase the best Muay Thai athletes. So the last three years, the reach is so huge, right? We, 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 we have, you know, hundreds of millions of fans all over the world. And our viewership numbers are just so big that that is the first way. That, if you think about how Muay Thai grew, I would say Muay Thai the last 20 years grows slowly, 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 slowly. And then the last three years, boom, because it's on TV everywhere. Um, before that, Muay Thai was on TV on Channel 7 in Thailand on Channel 3. That's it. So, you know, and one channel only began broadcasting Muay Thai maybe five years ago. Uh, but really three years ago is when, when, when it really took off, when the whole world started to love Muay Thai. And what I like is, you know, there's Muay Thai gyms now all over the world, every country. And they have more students and more fans because of one championship. So I'm very grateful for that too, you know. Um, of course, it all begins though with Muay Thai as the art of in the history of Thailand, but also our Thai athletes, whether it's Nong O or Tawan Chai or Yot Sang Klai or um, all of these incredible athletes we have. Uh, this is the biggest era of Muay Thai. And I'm telling you, the future of Muay Thai is the biggest. And also the money, you know, one championship money is the biggest ever in the history of Muay Thai. Before, maybe if you're a Lumpini uh, champion, you get 100,000 baht, sand baht, yeah. uh, uh, for, per fight. You know, we have a Muay Thai world champion. They, they, they make, you know, uh, millions of baht, you know. Uh, and this is the first time in history that we have this. And so that also makes me happy because now what – I was always very sad when I was a child uh, because even if you're Lumpini champion, okay, 30 years ago, you make sand bad. But after your career is over, you become a tuk-tuk driver or a, 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 or a, a yam, a night guard. Yep. You have no opportunity. You start off poor from Isan or Buriram or whatever, and you go become a champion, then you make money, and then you lose it all, and then you become a tuk-tuk driver again. Now, today, because of one, the Muay Thai athletes now can escape poverty and be rich, very rich, with millions of baht in the bank. So this makes me happy that one championship is changing the lives of our Muay Thai athletes, changing the economic future of the Muay Thai athletes, gyms, teachers, trainers, everybody's getting lifted up because of one championship. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful and thankful to be in this position, this opportunity uh, to help so many people. So Muay Thai industry, uh, Muay Thai industry, uh, started to change as a whole and then people started to earn a lot more than they used to and the image of Muay Thai in Thailand also changing as well yes. uh, like you mentioned before that 20 years ago it uh, maybe considered that uh, it's a sport for only poor people but today we see more rich kids and women young lady they go to Muay Thai gym for exercise yes. are you happy to see that that trend Yes, you know, I, like I said, you know, when I first started Muay Thai many, many years ago, I it was a poor man's sport. Actually, all my family and friends, they thought I was crazy. Why do I want to do such a dirty sport, a poor sport, you know? Uh, but I love Muay Thai, and, and, and I'm proud to be Thai. And um, so, of course, it makes me happy. You know, I, I, like I said, I've been a, a student, a teacher, uh, sorry, a student, a competitor, a teacher, 
In America, I was teaching Muay Thai and I'm very proud. But now I see how Muay Thai is boom all over the world and everybody in Thailand is learning. And now, before we always said Muay Thai Morodok, Thai Morodok Lok, but now it's the truth. Before, if you think about it, Muay Thai was Morodok Konjon, right? Morodok for the poor people. But today it's Morodok Thai, Jing Jing. Everybody in Thailand loves and appreciates Muay Thai. And also now it's Morodok Lok, which is the treasure of the world. Treasure, Muay Thai treasure of Thailand, Muay Thai treasure of the world. This is what has happened. Uh, and one championship has been the, the driving force of this. But then there are maybe some people who still see Muay Thai as a very violent and brutal sport. Uh, what would you say to that? It's the biggest misconception. Yes, Muay Thai teaches you how to fight, how to defend yourself in self-defense situation. Yes. But Mu Muay Thai is a beautiful art, like piano, like painting, like music. It's an art. And I tell you, as someone who's been doing all my life, I train Muay Thai five, six times a week, even now. What do I learn from Muay Thai? I learn integrity, humility, honor, respect, courage, discipline, compassion. I learn how to be a better human being. I learn how to fight for my dreams. This is the beautiful thing about Muay Thai as an art. So I think people realize this now. It's a healthy way to live your life. It's, a, it's, it's about being the greatest version of yourself. You know, Muay Thai gives so many beautiful things. And I think that is the world understand. But you're right. The misconception, the misunderstanding is Muay Thai is a violent sport for poor people. No. Muay Thai is a beautiful art. Like piano, like painting, like music. Muay Thai is a beautiful art that teaches you to be a better human being, teaches you to be a better uh, father, son, daughter, mother, you know. It, it's beautiful. And, then, and I can tell you, it's my life. How did I escape poverty? When my father went bankrupt in the Tom Yam Gung era, in the Asian financial crisis, he abandoned the family. I only have my mother and my younger brother, but I have Muay Thai. And Muay Thai gave me the fighting spirit to go to America with no money. The fighting spirit to bring my mother with me. And you know, without Muay Thai, I would not be here today. And lastly, let me ask you, uh, what is your greatest lesson you learned from Muay Thai after struggling to earn success as a one championship promoter? Um, for me, the biggest lesson about Muay Thai is life is a fight. Every single person in this world, we have to fight for our dreams. We have to fight for our loved ones. We have to fight for our future. We have to fight for the good in the world. We have to fight for our values. We have to fight to create a better world for everybody. Life is a fight. And Muay Thai teaches you to fight 100%. And Thai, we say Jai Lai, 100% with your heart to be a fighter for your dreams and for your loved ones, for your future. This is Muay Thai. I started to feel pumped up right now. I might have to go to sign up for Muay Thai class. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Kun Chatri, for talking with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you. And we will see you again at Voice of the Nation every Monday to Friday at 8 p.m.